at home. Today is a special day. Today is Pentecost Sunday. It's a day to wear red, or in my case, pink. A day to celebrate the birth of the church, not by the breaking of ground on a construction project or the erection of a steeple, but instead, it is a celebration that is honored by the telling of the story of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the inner sanctum of the life of God present within you. And so we celebrate this day together, even though we are apart. We name the birth of the church in the world and its activity even now in these uncommon days. We celebrate the many ways that you are the body of Christ. So let us continue now in the worship of God together. For however you have found us online, know that during this time, you are a part of our church because all are welcome here. We welcome you to our time together today, Lord. You are the reason we gather. Your presence among us unites our spirits, stirs our hearts to service, inspires our minds to think thoughts of you. As we celebrate this Pentecost Sunday, we rejoice in the gift of your Spirit to us all. No matter our relationships, you have found us worthy of such a great gift. Restore this part of your body to worship and witness, not only this day, but every day. Amen. experience God's love through doing quiet activities like reading and writing. I experience the love of God when I see little children play and hear them laugh. I feel God's love on the Ogie Mogi River. I experience God's love every time I come out onto the patio and see the beauty of the spring and summer flowers. I've experienced God's love through the quality time I've spent with my family during the pandemic. So how have you seen the presence of God in these days? Where do you see your own testimony of God's love? Feel free to make your own submission because everyone, everyone can see the presence of God's love if they look for it. Email your submissions to churchoffice at highlandhillsbaptist.org for their inclusion in our service. Wherever you are, will you pray with me? Allow the words of this prayer to become the words of your mind and heart 
Allow it to inspire your own prayers in this season. Where the light begins. Perhaps it does not begin. Perhaps it is always. Perhaps it takes a lifetime to open our eyes to learn to see what has forever shimmered in front of us. The luminous line of the map in the dark. The vigil flame in the house of the heart. The love so searing we cannot keep from singing. This love, this light of Pentecost. We cry out in testimony and praise. Perhaps this day will be the mountain over which the dawn breaks. Perhaps we will turn our face toward it, toward what has been always. Perhaps our eyes were finally open in ancient recognition, willingly dazzled, illuminated at last. Perhaps this day the light begins in us. Spirit of the living God, Epistle reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us in our own native languages? Amazed and astonished, they ask, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? All were amazed and, and complexed, 
saying to one another, what does this mean? What does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in these days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and smoky mist. 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 The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Power. Well, the day of Pentecost has come, and we are not all together in one place. 
but in a very real way. We are just as united by the presence of the Holy Spirit as those first disciples who knew the presence of God by the effects of the wind and the enlightenment and warmth of heart and hearth of flame. It's appropriate that fire and wind are signs of the undeniable presence of God. They each bear their own mystery, their own romance. And this story does too. When in the midst of a festival, the people of God were gathered, and suddenly something amazing happened. Through all of their divisions, they could hear the one true voice of God. The story is one of cosmic unity and one of those texts that every layperson in the pews dreads to be asked to read in church. Here, the gathered crowd comes from far places both in time and space. Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, these aren't all even concurrent people groups of the time. Already, with a wink, Luke is telling us about something more than just the first gathering of these spirited disciples. He's telling us something about how If we let it, the Spirit of God can heal the divisions of our days as well, bringing together all of the people of God into one tent, one family, and in one purpose, to build the beloved community, the kingdom of God. And that is no drunken tale. No staggering pronouncement of a disciple at nine o'clock in the morning saying, I love you, man. Instead, that is the work of the Holy Spirit of God to bring together the people of God across boundaries of race and class, of gender and politics, and yes, of even time and space. Here, Pentecost is framed as a cosmic event the promise of God, not just for a people, but for all people throughout time to be gathered together in the one family of God. You can see in these days when cities are burning and families are holed up and hiding out for fear of a global pandemic, that you wonder if we'll ever be one people. We can't even agree on What facts are facts in the news? We need the spirit of God's truth in the age of pronouncements of fake news. We need the word of the spirit to bring us together. We need the church. So here I am standing once again in an empty church. The pews are bare. The hallways are quiet. And it's hard even for the pastor to realize that here in this story, this birthplace of the church, that it began not by a divine building project, not by the breaking of ground, but by the hollowing out of heart of people of good and godly will who said yes to the Spirit of God. If you're like me, maybe you've been thinking about this old church tune It's been popular since the late 60s, Kurt Kaiser's Pass It On. It only takes a spark to get the fire going. It's been sung around campfires and choruses for many, many years. And if it gets stuck in your head, well, good luck getting it out because it only takes a spark to get that song going too. It's hard not to think of its viral message in the season of COVID where just a spark, just one asymptomatic shedder of the virus, just one person can infect so many. Fear 
is something that can become rampant in these days, seemingly spreading with a greater sense of intensity than joy ever could. But here is the truth, that the joy and the love and the peace of God that we celebrate here in this building is just an echo of the source of that joy that is found within you. You are the church. You are the dwelling places of God in this world. We gather here to learn how to share it, how to pass it on. But where you are in the living of these uncommon days, you are Highland Hills Baptist Church. You are the presence of Christ, the bearer of the Holy Spirit. And it only takes a spark of joy, of gratitude, a pronouncement of faith in the midst of a season of fear and doubt that can make all of the difference in the world. So maybe you should refresh your memory on Kaiser's song. He wrote it, of course, while sitting next to a fireplace that had died down, the embers still glowing. And he had the thought, well, it only takes a spark to get that fire going. He wrote the words to that song in 20 minutes, and we've been singing it for far more than 20 years. I wonder if your faith feels like it's on its last ember, if this season might present for you that very same opportunity, a spark to rekindle your faith, to share light in these days that are filled with darkness. We need the healing presence of people of good and godly will to reach out in this time of fear and also to be compassionate in this time of pain. This has been a season of hurt and loss. We see an economic divide that is growing. The news inundates us with stories of racial violence that break our hearts due to the long arc of this country's participation in it. Our hearts are broken as people of color are once again put in a place of pain, of stress. How do we respond as the people of God? How do we respond as Americans? How do we offer peace and compassion? It only takes one person offering with a generous spirit, not answers, not their perceived truths, but instead offering the space for grace to happen, for healing to simply be, to stand with those who find themselves on the margins, whether that's people of color or communities who are more susceptible to this illness to all of those who are experiencing dis-ease in these depressing days. Let us stand together and not apart, even while we are apart. It is only the spirit that can help us to overcome these divisions, of party, of person, of race, of color, of class, of gender, and all of those things that loom like specters around us and between us but it is the spirit of God that can kindle a different kind of community, a community where we come together with one common confession, Jesus Christ is Lord, where we come together as a family of faith adopted into the very fabric of God's family. The fires of Pentecost have kindled a warm and inviting space for us. And God has set a table. You'll hear more about that next week. But the candles are lit. The table is set. And God, God wishes to kindle a new kind of space where all people may come and gather together without fear and in faith. Let us generate some gratitude for that space that's present not just here, but wherever you are. God be with us in these days. Amen. 
Good morning, Highland Hills family. This is Jennifer Brown. I am the Deacon of the Week this week. Please let me know if you have any concerns that I can help you with. Let's go to, to the Lord together in prayer. Oh God, we come before you with praise this morning. We exalt you, our God and our King. You are most worthy of praise. The psalmist says these words, Great is the Lord, his greatness no one can fathom. The Lord is faithful and loving toward all he has made. He upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. This morning I pray that we take these words to heart. He is near when we call on him. Call on him today. Exalt him today. Lean on him today. Celebrate his abundant goodness today. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. One of the amazing things in these days has been hearing the words of our benediction through other voices. So here now, our final good words for this day. And now, you need to stop and remember who you really are. You are sons and daughters of God. You are friends and disciples of Christ Jesus, our Lord. You are gifted and empowered by the Holy Spirit, and the love, the joy, and the peace of God is at loose in this world through your very lives. So go now in peace and serve the Lord with gladness all of your days. Amen. <laughs>